What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and like the title says, today we are talking about flavor notes. Some are simple, like chocolate and caramel, others are a little bit more intricate, like dried mango and lemon rind, and others are just plain weird, like grape candy and leather. So in this video I'll be talking, or ranting, depending on how you look at it, about a few things. Things like, should we really expect to taste these wild flavor notes in our morning cup of coffee? Are those off-the-wall notes that we see on some coffee bags a marketing ploy? Should we as an industry move away from these very specific flavor notes? And maybe a few more topics if the feeling strikes. So join me, won't you, on this journey, or whatever you want to call it, all about flavor notes. But first, let's do just a quick and dirty review on what flavor notes actually are. To start, flavor notes or tasting notes are things that are inherent within the coffee bean itself and not something that's added either during or after the processing or roasting. So all these things happen naturally and there's a few different things that can affect the flavor of your coffee. A few of these things are origin, processing, roasting, and brew method, just to name a few. Now I could go on and on about how flavor notes are affected by your soil or your varietals or all these different aspects that come into play, but I'll save that for a different video. Today I want to focus more on the flavor notes that are on the bag and how we perceive them. Some coffees have flavor notes that are just so intense and so clear that it would bring some people to ask if that coffee has been actually flavored to taste like that certain thing. Other flavors can just be extremely subtle and require some significant tasting experience as well as a pretty big catalog of flavor references. For example, can you clearly explain to someone the difference between the taste of a Meyer lemon and a standard lemon? Or maybe the differences between semi-sweet chocolate and baker's chocolate? Now that whole thing just isn't very easy and requires some pretty extensive training and expertise, calibration, recalibration, testing, certification, and recertification, and the people who do those types of things are called Q graders, and that's just a really highly specialized coffee tasting person. But for the average or even knowledgeable consumer, tasting notes serve as a guide to aim them in the right direction to find a coffee they'd like. Do you think that the average person will taste chocolate and that Brazilian coffee? Yeah. Probably, but will the average consumer taste grape jelly donut in that naturally processed Costa Rican? No, probably not. Now we've all seen a coffee bag with an odd flavor note on it here or there. These tend to be the exception and not so much the rule in terms of flavor notes, but they happen. The off the wall notes that we see can range from things like breakfast cereals, beloved childhood candies, and even things that don't really have a recognizable or even a flavor to speak of. Are we there yet? No. So this begs the question, are some of these crazy off the wall flavor notes more of a marketing ploy than anything else? And at this point, I think I have to say that yeah, in some cases this is true. The fact is this type of marketing works and it worked on me very recently when I posted this question to Instagram asking my followers what are some of the weirdest coffee flavors you've seen and someone posted a coffee with the flavor note of mango white claw. For those not familiar with white claw, it's an alcoholic malt beverage that's basically a sparkling water with some flavor added to it. So seeing a coffee with this flavor on the bag added a level of curiosity that I just couldn't resist. A morbid curiosity, but curiosity nonetheless. But that curiosity brought me to their website it brought me to that specific coffee, and then I found myself putting in my credit card information and buying a $20 bag of coffee to ship across the country just to see if it tasted like Mango White Claw. And not even being familiar with what Mango White Claw tasted like, I went out and bought one of those just to compare the two. And spoiler alert, it tastes nothing like Mango White Claw. But who's to say they didn't taste it? I can't say that. I can't say that they didn't taste mango white claw in that natural Ethiopian, but to me it just feels like a marketing strategy more so than a note that your customers are actually going to experience. In the bigger picture, flavor notes actually do us a pretty solid service by being kind of a guide, being a coffee Sherpa, 
and sending us in the right direction of finding coffees that we'd like with things that we want in our cup of coffee. And very rarely will you buy a coffee that has things that are completely wrong or completely misguided on the bag as flavor notes. In some ways, flavor notes are just very simple. If you like fruity coffees, look for fruit notes. If you like chocolatey coffees, look for chocolate notes. But try not to be discouraged if you don't taste exactly the notes that are on the bag. Oftentimes, those flavors on the bag are chosen in very specific, almost lab-like circumstances that are very, very difficult for most people or anyone to recreate at home or anywhere else. Especially at home with that dusty old Baratza Encore that your roommate just ground a two-year-old bag of vanilla-flavored 7-Eleven coffee in, and that water from a Brita filter that hasn't been changed since The Office was still putting out new episodes. No! You'll thank me later. And yes, of course, these are very extreme and specific circumstances, but it really illustrates my point that the flavor notes on the bag should be taken with a grain of salt. In fact, some roasters are moving away from that very highly specific flavor note program. Take this bag from Kickapoo Coffee, for example. It basically gives you just enough information to aim you in the right direction in finding a coffee you'd like, but not specific enough to have customers sliding into their DMs asking why, in that new Ethiopian they just got, they didn't taste Pickle Rick. I'm Pickle Rick! Flavor notes are kind of a fun, but sometimes stressful, balancing act that we as roasters and consumers play with each other. I don't think many, if any, roasters are lying about what they taste on the bag, but I do my best to try to keep myself a little bit from looking at the flavor notes too much because I really don't want to be pushed or suggested in one direction or another about what I should be tasting in that coffee, but my self-control could use a little work. It's way too easy to take a sip of coffee and think to yourself, yeah, that does taste like orange soda. But would you have gone down that path without first seeing that flavor note on the bag? Now, that's something that's actually worth asking yourself next time you're sipping a coffee and looking at the notes. I think that as an industry, as coffee professionals, and even as coffee consumers, we should try to understand the power of suggestion and the effect that that has over us and our coffee tasting experience, and really try to avoid it as much as possible. I can't be the only one who takes a sip of coffee sometimes while looking at the bag and look at those flavor notes and think, yeah, okay, and just really grind those gears until I taste what's on the bag. And that's just no fun for anyone. As you can probably tell, Tasting Notes and I have a love-hate relationship. On one side of the coin, they help aim me in the right direction in finding coffees that I prefer. On the other side, they are very suggestive and tend to cloud my tasting experience where I'm focusing on trying to taste what's on the bag instead of actually tasting the coffee without any preconceived notions. In the end, I think there's a lack of understanding about how these flavor notes are actually found and determined. They're often done in a cupping lab with very specific recipes, grinders, water, and tasting practices like slurping off of a cupping spoon. And I think it also should be understood that some, if not many of these notes, may or may not come through on even a single cup of coffee you make from that entire bag. But now, I'm going to pass this question on to you. Is there a way we can bridge this gap? Should we just keep rolling with these very hyper-specific flavor notes, or should we try and spread them out and do broader categories? How do you feel when you buy a bag of coffee and you don't taste any of the notes on the bag? Do you feel misled? Or do you blame yourself or your brewing equipment or something like that? Lastly, let me know if you've ever bought a bag of coffee purely because of some interesting flavor note on the bag and you're just really curious. I know I can't be the only one. With that said, I think it's time to wrap this one up. Don't forget to drop the answers to life's coffee questions down below, and I'll see you lovely coffee folks next week. And a big thank you to my June Patreon supporters, Ads, James B, David, Hamag, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Joey, Thomas S, Noel, Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Aiden, Jonathan, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew, Ollie, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Horison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Dave B, Jerry, Marcus, Nicholas, Paul, RD, Tim, Matt, Tony, and of course, Zachary V. And last but not least, big thanks to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. 
And lastly, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Spromethius, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.